Okay, welcome to the second um, installment of our mini lecture series about acid-base disturbances and their clinical impact. And this is going to be about a very uh, strong disturbance by ketoacidosis in the context of diabetes mellitus type 1. So, we talked about the significance of pH regulation, why it is so important that blood pH is at around pH 7.4, we talked a little bit about the different buffer systems and then we concentrated on the most important one, CO2 and its conjugate ion carbonate. And we discussed how the lungs and the kidneys, well, not so much the kidneys yet, but we'll come back to that in lecture three, are involved in the regulation of blood pH. We talked about hyperventilation and COPD and how they disturb the blood pH. And now we are going to talk about compensated diabetic ketoacidosis. So um, why is this such an important and uh, illuminating example of uh, dysregulation of the blood pH? Because you have a gigantic amount of uh, ketone bodies due to the disturbance in diabetes mellitus type 1. So we are going to look at what that means for the blood pH, um, how uh, that leads to a disturbance in normal breathing uh, called Kussmaul breathing, and we're going to talk about the treatment options, which in, dit ca in this case are of course treatments of diabetes mellitus type 1. So um, what is the disturbance that is DM type 1? It has to do with the fact that your body can't make insulin anymore, the beta cells that normally secrete it um, uh, are not able to do that anymore, uh, for instance due to autoimmune responses. That means that because insulin normally uh, suppresses glucagon, you get uh, a glucagon excess, and glucagon is the hunger um, signal, and this leads to a release of uh, fatty acids, reduced glucose uptake uh, by uh, the muscles because they need insulin signaling to do that, and a disturbance in the amount of glucose and ketones that come into your body. Uh, the glucose increase uh, is partially due to glycogen breakdown by the liver, but also increased gluconeogenesis. But we haven't talked about uh, the main disturbance of the blood yet, and that has to do with the fact that hyperglycemia isn't the only aspect, we also have an enormous massive increase in uh, ketone body secretion by the liver. For that, it uses the fatty acids as a substrate, uh, and these were of course due to lipolysis, uh, lipolysis sorry, and uh, um, this gives um, the possibility to secrete massive amounts of ketone bodies in untreated diabetes mellitus type 1. And ketone bodies such as beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate are of course acidic molecules and that leads to metabolic acidosis. So your blood pH um, is really lower. This, this can lead to all kinds of um, problems in brain functioning and has to be treated as quickly as possible or otherwise you go into coma and possibly um, um, death will result. Okay, we go back to our Davenport diagram and show what's happening in this case. In this case, we have metabolic acidosis. So the CO2 exchange is still normal but the blood pH is lower because the carbonate buffering power is overpowered by the massive secretion of ketone bodies. So you get a lower blood pH. Um, the body of course notices this um, uh, increase in protons and tries to get rid of this. As we know, CO2 was an uh, acid forming molecule, so actually your breathing will increase uh, in uh, frequency and depth, and that's called Kussmaul breathing. And what you're actually trying to do is to get rid of protons by uh, breathing out, exhaling as much CO2 as possible. Uh, by the way, there, uh, it's sometimes used as an acronym for all kinds of situations in which your body shows this kind of physiological response, but the name of course comes from uh, the physician that first noticed this. Uh, noticed it 
in a patient, indeed in uh, a patient that had ketoacidosis. So um, this shift in uh, breeding compensates, and of course you shift to a situation in, what in which much more CO2 is exchanged with the environment. And uh, if that would work, you get fully compensated, um, um, a fully compensated situation in which you reach pH 7.4 again. Of course, this cannot work for a longer time, so you really have to treat this as quickly as possible. And the severe acidification is, of course, uh, coming from the disbalance in insulin and glucagon. So you can first uh, treat um, this disbalance so that the coma and death that would result from this kind of situation um, uh, does not occur. So this is the treatment. First of all, fluid and electrolyte replacement, uh, because due to the enormous amount of glucose in, and ketone bodies in your blood, you also start to pee a lot and you lose electrolytes. Secondly, you give insulin, that restores glucagon levels to normal levels, and then you get rid of the ketoacidosis and the high uh, glucose levels. And this, of course, has to be monitored uh, closely uh, by uh, using, um, for instance, um, the uh, normally available um, uh, gadgets that uh, type, type 1 patients nowadays have at their disposal. So in summary, uh, we now saw a metabolic disbalance. We saw the body uh, trying to get rid of these uh, effects on blood pH by Kuzma breeding, and we briefly discussed the treatment options. So I hope you are still interested in all kinds of disbalances because we are going to talk about alkalosis in lecture three next.